Welcome back to the Retro Tech Repair Shop and today we are joined by a Duracell Drumming Bunny. So Duracell Drumming Bunny, I hear from your seller that you no longer drum. So what is the point of you? Come on, hop off. And welcome back to the workshop. Today we have the Duracell Bunny, reported as the motor running but it doesn't drum, so we'll have a look at that. But the first question we have to ask ourselves is what could possibly be better than fixing a Duracell Bunny? Well the answer is quite obvious really, it's to fix two Duracell Bunnies. Okay, so for the first part we're going to find out what the uh, Duracell bunnies are actually doing when we put batteries in them. I'm just going to test the batteries I found in the workshop. 1.582 volts DC, 1.5 volt cells. 1.5, good. Okay, I'm happy with the batteries. You don't need an expensive meter like this, you can use a standard uh, five pound battery tester that will do an adequate job so let's put the uh, batteries in the bunnies and switch them on take a first look inside the battery compartment to see if there's any uh, deterioration close it up bunny number two check his battery compartment Okay, so the, there's definitely been leaking batteries inside this one. Okay, we'll give it an initial test and uh, find out what's going on. Okay, the blue-eyed bunny. This one, uh, the battery compartment looked good. So let's give him a try for the first time. Okay, the, obviously the motor is running. Mechanically, it's not doing anything. Bunny number two. No, the switch on bunny two is, uh, is a little stiff, but when you switched over, nothing at all. So green eye bunny is completely dead, blue eye bunny just makes a bit of a noise. Okay so we'll start with blue eye bunny. Let's take your batteries out. Let's see if we can figure out how to get you apart. Try and peel back his fur very carefully. Release the glue on the bottom of it and fold back the cover. Undressing a bunny, where did it all go wrong? Again, they've used hot glue to hold it into position. Let's see how we can remove the drum mechanism. Unfortunately that pin is very soft metal, 
so I can straighten it and pull it out. De-drummed. Okay, let's continue the undressing. They put an awful lot of glue around the switch, which I'll need to carefully pick away at. So I managed to release it off of the switch. And now I'm trying to work him up and get his arms out. Come on, let's get your arm out of there. Just fold your back. I'm not going to take it off your head. I've got access to the mechanism now. There appears to be four recessed screws of which one has fallen out, one is missing by the looks of it, and two are in place. So I can release that cover and have a look at the mechanism inside. Okay, using the instrument screwdriver again. These are very cheap to buy on Amazon and are quite vital if you're going to be taking things apart. You can get a normal size screwdriver in there. Be careful not to damage the mechanism. I'm just going to pry it, stretch the glue. It's got a little tag on it, stopping it. Okay, let's release that tag. That just looks wrong. Okay, so head is released off the bunny. That part of the mechanism fits in there. All right, should be able to get the covers off that now and look at the mechanics. And there we go. Now I've got full access to the mechanism. Okay, let's put some batteries in, switch them on, see what's happening. Oh. Well, I can see, <laughs> without even doing that yet, I can see that that, that little cog is not engaging with that. Okay, let's deal with that. Put some batteries in there and just show you that, demonstrate that. The whole mechanism looks like it's been knocked around a bit. Not the finest bunny on the inside. I'll have to straighten, look there. I'll have to straighten that plate out a bit. Looks like it's been whacked at some point. Our batteries okay. are back in. It's feet, and switch them on. And that's what we heard before. The motor's running. It's not driving the actual mechanical mechanism. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to put that back into position where it should be. And um, then we'll try the mechanics out to see if there's any further issues. Before I permanently fix that back into position, just to engage it. It's very quite loose on there actually. I'll switch him on. Okay, let's make it fuller out. Plastic, right. So I need to look further at the mechanism now. Oh, fact, it just drove the wheel straight out. So we're going to hold that in position. Ooh, doesn't sound good, does he? I've just started the disassembly of the second rabbit and firstly we noticed on this one that there seemed to be some battery leakage inside the compartment. When I've managed to release the fur off the bottom the whole battery compartment was in fact broken. The plate there is broken as well as you can see there's all this sort of very acidy uh, contamination that's got into the unit. I have managed to put a power supply onto it 
and I can get the motor to run now but it's doing exactly the same as the other one there's no mechanical movement so I'm going to expose the rabbit a bit more take him apart and see if he's got the same kind of problem rabbit 2 seems to have a lot less glue on him it was easy to get the, the base off um, and it was a lot easier to release it around here so I don't know if rabbit number 1 has already had a repair by somebody else um, and that's why it adds quite so much glue on so let's get your clothes off Let's unscrew you. Take your head off as well. Okay, this one is quite horrible inside. Okay, first initial look I can see again that cog's not engaging there. So let's clean all this up because it is, I'm not sure this is the residue out of the batteries. I'll have to put this in a uh, tub and give this a good degrease and clean up first. fast drying degreaser starts to quite quickly clean away all the battery residue just move the boxes out of the way As you can already see, it's a great improvement already. Any difficult areas I come across, difficult to get to, I will use a cotton wool bud. <clears throat> I've now got the worst of the uh, contamination off. I mean, at least I'm in a position where I can try it out. Now, as we've got a broken battery compartment, I'm going to hook up a bench power supply onto here, supplying 2 times 1.5 volts, so 3 volts DC to this unit. So we we'll give it a test run. Okay, bench power supply, let's just adjust it to get 3 volts before we start. Now we've set for 3 volts. Alright, which one's positive, which one's negative? Well, a bit of a clue there. We've got a black cable going to that one, which must be the 0 volt, negative. And we've got a red cable there, positive. Switch is in the off position. Put that on. Switch it on. Oh, cool. This wasn't engaged on there. I pulled it off a minute ago. So it was, this was how it was before we started. Re engage it. Apply some adhesive just to hold that, stop it. Uh, stop the main gear on the drive motor from disengaging again and allow that to dry and then I will continue just cleaning it up a bit and reassembling it repairing this battery compartment etc. When you compare the mechanics of Bunny 1 and Bunny 2 this one 
seems a lot more rigid in this area here and this one seems really be flopping about ever such a lot it's got a washer underneath it but it's uh, I think you could do with more the other rabbit has a much larger looks like rubber washer underneath here this one hasn't got so I'm going to see what I can put in its place I've got a grommet that's too big as it is um, it fits nicely over the area I'm going to cut that grommet in half and use that as a uh, shock absorber I'm going to place a new shock absorber underneath Still washer on top and replace it. Okay, that's the pin in. Uh, it seems to be a bit too rigid now, so I'm going to cut down the grommet a little bit more. Okay, I've reduced the height of the grommet slightly. Put that in there. secure that into position. I'm going to apply a two-part fast drying epoxy resin to the area of the broken battery connector. Um, allow that to set before remounting its feet or cleaning this up a bit more remounting the feet. Okay, before I just tape the connector that's been epoxied into position, I'm just going to clear up a little bit more of this battery leakage contamination. We obviously don't want that falling in the mechanism. Okay, I'm going to tape this into position now. Epoxy should be ready to go off. his feet. Okay, so Bunny 2 um, has had the battery holder repaired. I'll put some batteries in it and we'll give it its first test. Okay, it's looking good. Okay, let's put it back together again. Put your head on. Heads back on, secured. I think it's time to put your fur on. Take your batteries out. Put your fur on. Right, let's find your switch. 
Alright, there's your switch. Time to neaten you off a bit. We'll apply a little hot melt type glue. Now we're going to put the drum back on. Bend the pin over, hold the drum on. Going to put some batteries in you and check your operational before hot gluing your fur back down again. You have been reconstructed. Right, we've got your brother to fix now. He needs a little bit more work on the mechanics. Right, looking closely at it, that was moving forwards as well. But inside, the internal gears aren't engaging. Again, there's a lot of play in here where the gears aren't engaging. So you need to address the positions of these cogs here so they all engage properly. Take that drive pulley off first cog uh, because I'm going to mount that and glue that back into position. And this is the other one that's moving. It's not in the right position. We've got a, the internal uh, gear is, I've moved it out of the way, we've got a lot of grease and oil on the drive shaft that I want to clean off before trying to uh, re-glue that in position. Okay, final clean before I dab a bit of glue and move that gear back into the right position to engage on these other gears. Okay. Just going to keep that rotating whilst the glue dries. Make sure we don't stick it all together. Just repeat the cleaning process on the motor drive shaft. Dry it off. Glue's had time to go off. So this is the first test. Okay, that's just slightly disturbing. Right, I'm giving him a test. So I'm gonna give him a test run for about 10 minutes to make sure there's nothing else mechanically goes wrong. And then it'll be time to reassemble you. Okay, that's been a 10 minute test run. Time to go off and make a cup of coffee. Coffee? No, I don't drink coffee. Okay, so let's reassemble him. Okay, that's got it lined up. Okay, let's get his head on. put the batteries back in just to give him a test to make sure before I put his fur back on because that's quite awkward. Okay, rabbit number one 
It's got his fur back on him, which can be a quick test before we put his drum back. Let's put this one back on as well. Right, let's uh, push your pin in. Okay, it's refixed. Let's glue your fur on. Right, okay, let's um, get it all back together again. Bunny number one, blue eyed bunny, let's give him a try. Okay, showtime. So there we have it. After several hours of work, we've managed to repair two broken Duracell bunnies. Hopefully they will last for many years into the future. I hope you found some of the techniques useful and that you can apply them to whatever it is you may be fixing. And from a nostalgia point of view, if you've ever wondered how these bunnies worked, hopefully you've now got an answer to that question. So until next time, thanks for watching.